You're listening to The CLE Show. Hi, and welcome to The CLE Rock Review. I'm Jay. As always, let's start off with the gigs. May 25th through the 27th, the Winchester Music Tavern is hosting three days of music. You can check out uh, some locals on day two, including the Front Porch Lights, Dirty Mirrors, Ray Flanagan, and AJ in the Woods. On May 31st, Cracker is at the Music Box Supper Club. If you like prog, stoner rock, then check out Between the Witches along with The Long Hunt and Jake the Hawk on June 1st at Cedars in Youngstown. There's a new songwriter event happening at the CODA. Uh, it's called Therapy Thursdays. On June 14th, they'll have Madeline Finn and Ryan Flutterick. The Dead Boys and Archie in the Bunkers are going to be at the Beachland Ballroom on June 29th. And on July 10th, uh, this kind of cracked me up a little bit, Sebastian Bach in brackets, the original singer of Skid Row, uh, also known as the, uh, the strange guy in Gilmore Girls, he's going to be at the Agora. July 11th, then you've got the Bacon Brothers at the Music Box Supper Club. And uh, it came through my inbox the other day. Tickets are announced uh, for Nine Inch Nails at the Fox Theater in Detroit for October 23rd. And these guys, along with Turbo Lovers, are going to be at the Royal Oaks in Youngstown on June 2nd. It's Public Squares with Go Medium. They're also going to be uh, at the Grog Shop on June 9th, along with the Dickies, the Queers, and the Tufted Muffins. I was walking on the fence I'm going to take you back in time. This is the Chargers Street Gang with Twisted and Old from their 2001 release, Holy the Bop Apocalypse. Yeah, I said it right. After this, we'll be talking to Lachlan McKinnon from the Chargers Street Gang about how he dabbled in writing a new book. Yeah. 
Okay, we've got Lachlan McKinnon joining us, the author of Let Me Tell You a Story, released in February. Hi, Lachlan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great, great. Thanks for joining us. So, an author now. Tell us about your book. Yeah. Uh, It's just, uh, I was writing these funny little stories, like, on Facebook, and uh, I was offered, um, somebody had offered to, you know, put it out as an actual book, and I kind of thought they were joking for a long time, but... Uh, they weren't. So I just, uh, you know, all these uh, funny stories that I would put out with for my friends on Facebook, uh, uh, we just, you know, collected a bunch of them and turned them into uh, to uh, my book. Okay, because I was going to ask you, like, why did you decide to do that? I mean, it's not something that sort of comes up every day. Somebody just, you know, wakes up and says, hey, I feel like uh, writing a memoir kind of thing. So <laughs> yeah, no, it, that's, uh, I was just uh, it, like last, probably like in 2016, like around the election, I was just getting bummed out because every time you would look on Facebook, it would be like, you know, uh, political stories and stuff like that. And so I would just, you know, write funny little stories about uh, my life growing up, you know, and most of them are pretty embarrassing and, uh, you know, they're, they're funny. So uh, I would just do that just to kind of break up the monotony of it. So it wasn't really... You know, I didn't set out to write a book about myself because my ego is not that inflated. You know, it was uh, just kind of how it came about. And what's been the reaction from your friends and family and stuff? Um, it's I've been pretty surprised. I mean, everybody seems to like it. Uh, they think it's funny. And, you know, there was there's some there's definitely some downer stories that are in it. But, uh, I you know, I couldn't. I didn't want to want to make it seem like I was a clown, you know. So uh, there's definitely some uh, some sad stories in there, but the reaction has been uh, pretty positive. I've been uh, kind of blown away by it. That's great. Did you fit any stories of your Charger Street Gang days? Uh, you know what? It, it's actually not a ton of them. So I, I kept uh, I kept journals the whole time, like all the time uh, we would tour and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I kept uh, these journals of. Um, Every we would say just because I was like the one member of the band that didn't drink, so you know, last show and stuff like that. When I couldn't fall asleep, I would just write little notes for my the, the the shows and stuff like that. And so, and I convinced the other guys in the band that it would be okay. Is I'm gonna you know try I would to try to turn all the journals into you know like a, a separate book by on its own. We did a lot of stupid things, uh, you know, and played a lot of shows. Like, I could be mildly entertaining to uh, people. And in 2001, I was looking through some, it's amazing what you can find on Google these days. So in 2001, you guys were a band of the week in the Cleveland scene, the enviable position. Um, but 2001 was a very different time for independent local music. I mean, there was no MySpace, there was no Facebook, you know, no uh, CD Baby and stuff like that. So how did you guys sort of drum up the buzz back then? Uh, well, you know, just uh, we got a lot of, you know, before like the internet and stuff like that, you kind of had to just get out of the house and, you know, go do stuff and meet people. And, you know, it was the, the sort of the same thing with like my book is that, you know, it was just word of mouth was the best uh is always the best advertising. So, you know, we were pretty good live and, you know, uh, we were pretty fun. So people would come see us and hopefully you would, they would tell their friends and all of that. Yeah. So it was just good old fashioned word of mouth and being good at what you do. So that's still the best, (laughs) still the best policy nowadays, I suppose, even with uh, all the technology that we have. So, um, I'm interested what, why you think, um, because Cle- Cleveland was a very different city as well in 2001, I imagine. You've probably seen it evolve over the years. Um, but one thing has remained constant. Cleveland's always been known for having a very thriving music scene. Why do you think that might be? Um, well, it's Cleveland's a, it's a blue-collar town, and so all people do is work. And when they're not working, they're going to drink. And so bars are going to be full, and if you know if there's bands that are good, uh, people will go out and see them. 
the, the funny thing, like now that I'm, uh, you know, this wise old man of uh, Cleveland Rock, I've sort of seen, um, you know, like I'm not really like part of, the, I'm not the cool kids anymore, you know, and mm-hmm. like there's been, you know, we're like almost two generations removed from like the people who would go see, you know, like my band and stuff like that. And I've had other bands since then. And it's sort of frustrating because it would it would always be the same people like that would come see us. Like I was in a band called Ohio Civil War, but it seemed like most of the people who would come see us were people that, you know, knew the Chargers and stuff like that. Sure. So uh, that that's sort of frustrating. But at the same time, um, I guess it's cool. Like people are loyal, you know, so if they liked you, you know, 20 years ago, they'll still probably like you, you know, and there's certain there's definitely bands in town that have been around just as long and are still doing really, really cool things. So Cleveland, the people who stay in Cleveland, who, you know, is not everybody, but the people who stay are certainly loyal. Yeah, I think also like from from what I've observed as well, the universities, it seems to be a bit of a hotbed for these bands that just kind of pop up and they might fizzle out really quick, but, you know, they have that kind of that sort of young creative streak where they have no worries and they haven't been jaded and cynical like you and I have <laughs> as time wears right. on us, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure that that's not unique to Cleveland. I think that that's probably the case everywhere, you know, mm. like, you know, when we were coming up, like when the Beachland first opened, things like that, we would play there a lot and there was a scene there, but... You know, now, like, the cool scene is at, like, May Halls or Happy Dog. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's that's cool. That's just, that's natural, like, sort of progression for a city. Yeah. So are there any bands that you're kind of into right now that are, are local? Um, the local bands that uh, I like right now, um, the best band in town, I think, is probably, um, they're called Public Squares. And they just put out a new record that's uh, pretty incredible. Okay. I like... Uh, I like Archie in the Bunkers and Wrong Places and uh, F.U. Pay Me I like a lot. Great. We'll have to check them out then. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so your your book, just really quickly. So so the whole process of this, do you you plan to write more? It sounds like you enjoyed writing when you were in the band, journaling and things like that. Do you have any plans to uh, do it again? Uh, you know, maybe we're trying to, you know, sell some of uh, this first one. And, you know, I mean, like, I, I have no uh, delusions. I still, you know, drive a forklift for a living and, you know, have to have uh, pay my bills, you know, the old fashioned way. But uh, I did really enjoy writing. Uh, I can't really take myself seriously enough to call myself a writer. But, you know, I did enjoy it. And I would love to do it uh, more in the future. But I hope that, uh, you know, we can get people to uh, buy this first one. Okay, so how can we get hold of it? Uh, at all the local bookstores, uh, Max Max, uh, Blue Arrow Records, My Mind's Eye Records, Visible Voice Books. Um, it's available there. It's also available um, on Amazon if you just uh, punch in the title, Let Me Tell You a Story, and, you know, it'll pop up that way. Great. Or if you ever if you ever see me around town, I always have uh, you know a bag of them in the trunk of my car. I, that I'm... I saw that on your Facebook. I thought you know I think he might actually be serious. <laughs> uh, no, I'm absolutely serious. I got it. You know, I, that's uh, you know somebody somebody else put money up into this, and I don't like I don't like to have to owe people owe people money. You know, so I don't want to let let a box of these linger. Uh, you know, in my attic, I want to I want to try and get them out to people. All right, you heard it here. Go buy Lachlan's book. It's called Let Me Tell You a Story at all local bookstores and on Amazon. Thank you so much, Lachlan, for telling us your story today. Oh, thanks very much for having me. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
That was the Chargers Street Gang with Black and Tan from their 2001 release, Holy the Bop Apocalypse. Thanks so much to Lachlan for coming on the show and telling us about his new book. Now we've got from Akron, the Ruminators. They say if you like Top 40, then you're just going to hate this band. It's Reptilian Commando. That was Me Time and the Raging Crush from Akron with It's All Right. They're going to be at the Buzzbin Art and Music Shop on June 29th along with Kent's. 
sexy pig divas. I certainly have some very interesting band names on this episode, don't I? All right, next up, we've got the Sonderbombs with Shitty Boyfriend. It's a short but sweet song described as uke punk, seemingly as their vocalist Willow Hawks plays the ukulele on stage. But she sings about some pretty serious uh, topics. Well, I think that you can get over your ex-boyfriend. And I know right now that it don't seem like the
That was the trios with Do You See? It's off their new album, which was released earlier this year, which you can hear on their band camp. Next up, we've got a really cool band called The Katie. And they say they're Memphis born, but they're Cleveland bred. Their genre is a little bit fluid. Some play, some say it's jazz, some say it's blues, but we like them here at the CLE show. This is High in the North. You can catch them at the Hessler Street Fair on June 3rd. And before we play our ultimate song, just want to thank you so much for listening. This is a CLE Rock Review. I've been your host, Jay. Have a good one. Here's Orange Animal with Won't Let You Down, great blues rock band from the Cleveland and Akron area. Their album, Give It All Away, is available on Spotify, Apple Music, and CD Baby. Playing us out, Orange Animal. And nothing left to say Been traveling onwards We so on the way You're right from your side And so much been said I said I'm not built for this holy shit Faithful and dead Say good night then Be on your way Tomorrow won't seem to 
the songs of today Close to you, what's one more fight? 